with the big news that dropped over the weekend, the Texas abortion pill ruling, igniting a new legal national battle. The decision to suspend approval of a commonly used pill for the purpose of chemically induced abortions, which apparently are something like 98% of abortions that are done in the United States, would potentially impact all the nation states, nation's states. Okay. Anyways, the ruling by the Texas judge is a proposal or rather a ruling that would ban the pill known as misopristione, which is also known as RU486 and other names. So if you ever heard of RU486, RU486, this is RU486. This medication has been around for 20 years. It has non-abortion purposes as well as my understanding. In fact, the use for abortion is off-label. So as, car, as far as the FDA is concerned, it has no abortion-related uh, uh, abortion related uses because its use on label is not for the treatment of that particular condition. It's for other related things. But this judge has issued this ruling. Now, I've gone through the legal ruling at least a little bit trying to mark it up and trying to talk about it, and I found it a little bit difficult to mark it up and talk about it. I found the judge's ruling to be a little bit high on rhetoric and a little bit low on legal reasoning, if I could be completely honest about the thing, and also found the the reasoning and rationale to be somewhat uh, unpersuasive. So the, the, the issue as to whether or not the FDA should have approved this medication 20 years ago and whether it's safe and effective, I didn't think the judge did a particularly good job in, in describing the rationale, at least to my mind. But this judge issued this ruling, and the Biden administration has already sought appeal on this issue, as you would expect, to try to prevent it from going into effect. The ruling would potentially cause a nationwide suspension because, of course, this judge, like so many others, has issued a nationwide or what's sometimes called a global or universal injunction, which I also have ideological problems with. I don't know why one of 93 random district judges should be able to issue these nationwide injunctions. It seems a little bit odd that, you know, one of 93, well, there's more than 93 federal judges. There's 93 federal districts. So I don't even know how many federal judges there are, probably a couple hundred, to be honest. So I don't know why one of 93 districts should have the ability to issue a nationwide injunction when the districts themselves are not nationwide. Seems odd. And this is no exception to that rule for me. So I, I, have, I, I have procedural issues with this on sort of how that works. But yeah, this is supposed to be a nationwide injunction. Additional orders are likely to come in from other cases. The case now moves to the Fifth Circuit. And a quick trip to the U.S. Supreme Court seems likely. I would tend to agree because also there is a conflicting ju judgment from Washington State which issued the, a decision almost at exactly the same time by what seems to be coincidence. There had been ongoing litigation for some time that had impacted 17 states in the District of Columbia. And at almost the exact same time the Texas judge issued a nationwide injunction, a Washington district judge issued a ruling preventing the FDA from restricting the medication. So now you have two district judges in two different places, issuing decisions that are trying to look well beyond their district in any case, because the Washington the Washington decision at least impacts the 17 states in the District of Columbia that are impacted in that decision, which is more than the state of Washington. One will take note, and the Texas decisions have a nationwide impact. So you have these two district decisions that are trying to reach. Well, they're not really related cases, but they're, really, they're reaching decisions that are mutually incompatible with each other in different circuits. So that thing is a whole sort of nightmare fuel about the thing. So how is the FDA supposed to comply with both these without being contempt of at least one of them? I don't know. It doesn't make much sense to me from sort of procedural levels. A potential conflict could hasten the need for the Supreme Court to intervene, putting the justices back in the spotlight. And maybe if we're really lucky, the U.S. Supreme Court will say something more about the issue of these universal injunctions, which are more the issue for me. 
personally or legally. They're more the issue for me. It's more important of a legal issue for me because the issue of whether these district judges should be able to issue nationwide injunctions obviously impacts like all the cases. So whatever might be true with respect to the FDA and the medications or anything else, the more important issue for me is the procedural issue as to who should be allowed to issue these nationwide injunctions and under what circumstances. The U.S. Supreme Court has had this discussion, at least partially, this term on this issue because it is an issue that needs to be looked at. And this issue maybe will cause them to resolve that. So to some degree, I care less about the substantive issue than the procedural issue. But that's because I'm more of a proceduralist because that's how I roll. So that is happening. The FDA approved RU486, also known as Mythopristone in 2000. It knows, it's known by the brand name Mythoprex and has a generic version. So yeah, the day after two of taking this particular drug, they take a different drug known as misoprostol, which cause tr contractions, but it can, it, which can end pregnancy by itself, but is not as reliable and also cause heavier side effects if used by itself. So that's all the things that are happening with respect to that issue. So I don't take a particular moral issue on this particular issue. I just look at the law. I found the I found the Texas's judge's ruling to be it seemed to my mind to be more of an ends based rationale. It looked more like the judge was looking for a reason to ban it and finding rationales to support that conclusion rather than reasoning from first principles to find the end conclusion. It felt like a backward ridden analysis to me. Uh, maybe that's unfair, but that's how I how I read it. It felt a little heavy on rhetoric and light on law, and some of the some of the judges' decisions, particularly with respect to these third party standing issues and organizational standing, felt kind of weak. So I, I and also to the best of my knowledge, is the first time that a district judge has ever issued an injunction that would prohibit the FDA from continuing to sell a medication that has already been approved by the FDA. So there are obviously do decisions that rule as part of the process of it becoming approved, but I've never, I don't believe there's ever been a decision by a single district judge to remove a drug that's already been approved by the FDA. So it is unprecedented potentially in that respect as well which also should raise some red flags because if it's the first time it's ever been done, you know, then you're like, well, why? And then you look at the decision as I did and the reasoning is a little thin and you're like, I don't know about this. So yeah, you know, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know about any of that, but that's where that is all sitting. 